this 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 is a, an ongoing situation from um 2014 uh, after the um, the death of my mother but I've I was diagnosed with chronic anxiety from 2006 and I was always on treatment before I came to this country so, so leading up leading up to whatever is happening now coming up 10 years I after the death of my mother allegations were made against me and this led to me being um sent on medical suspension before I was sent on medical suspension I actually contacted my um employers to say uh, I, I'm in a in a letter to explain the full context of what was happening to me and I actually remember writing in that letter that I'm depressed and slowly dying of torture. They didn't do anything to help me. Then afterward they suspended me, sent me on medical suspension. And I, I saw the, the doctor, Dr. Laura Crawford, who advised me to see counseling to find out why I react the way I do to certain situations. I, I never got the support because I was still going to work after the, um, I'd seen Dr. Crawford. And then he reached the stage where I had I had the second nervous breakdown in my life after uh, and then I that's when I got the 12 counseling sessions at the Mosley and then after that I did um I did 2 years of 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 mental health research with King's College uh, any course that is going I always try to be on it I write extensively about any situation from cradle to grave, but I'm not getting the support that I need to heal. And, I, and my husband is 100 years old now, and he's he's traumatized as well because of what's been happening to us. And it's just as soon as I pick myself up, I'm back again to square one. And I I'm raised Christian, and to to think that because I was in a HCT group impact report where they my picture was on one side and and they had a statistic of one in five of all suicides associated with unemployment it is the barrister a black barrister who took my money who groomed someone and they sent the police here the first time to section me under a malicious report and i've not had any peace ever since now they're saying I was sectioned under the Mental Health Act and the, the defamation because I, I asked the council for a, um, a subject access request. It was 300 and odd pages of all these terrible things. When I look at it, that it really pushed me over as well. And now my housing association has him. After a malicious, another malicious report, they impose injunction. I cannot say anything or I'll be in prison and they're seeking to, um, to, to evict me from the home I got in 2000 as a result of domestic violence. I, I just can't take any more of all that's happening to me. You know, if I was functioning, if I was functioning, I wouldn't. It wouldn't be a problem. I've developed an eating disorder as a result of all that's happening. I don't, sometimes I don't wash, I don't cook, I don't sleep, I don't eat, I don't do nothing. And this, as I said, my husband is traumatized. I just need some help for both of us. I, I, I don't want to go the, to the extinct where I think, where I have to end my life for, um, to get released from this pain. I can't take no more. <laughs> The first happened after the death of my, my brother. He had cancer. That was 2008. So it's the same sort of, the same sort of allegations and, and, and that they use in, in the workplaces to, to, to really break me down. So the first time when, when the allegations were made, because um, I know I, I, was, I had chronic anxiety, but that had nothing to do with it. But when the allegation was made, I was like, I didn't know what was happening and because one of my brother had committed a, a criminal act and died in prison. I don't usually talk about that. I've I've kept it withheld. So I was thinking, is it something in my in my in my DNA? Because I had an auntie who was mad. So I self-referred. And although I, I, I got the support from two medical 
a male and a female. They just continued. And once you raise concerns in workplaces, this is how it ends up. Yeah, so this is the second time now I had the second nervous breakdown after the death of my mother. And then recently they tried a case behind my back whilst one of my brother was dying of cancer and another one blood vessel burst in his head. So I had the first high blood pressure on the 27th of July. And then by the 1st of August, they had a case behind my back. I didn't know anything about it uh, and everything. And, 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 and classed me as a violent criminal, a violent nuisance. On top of they gave me criminal record, um, needing emotional regulation treatment just to cover up the abuse rings that was in the workplace that I didn't even know they were abuse rings. Because I'd done a voice of a child research only to find out that the person who called me on the 27th of September 2021 was responsible also for men in child care and a voice of a child. So I'm being pushed, I'm being pushed to become the statistic of one in five of all suicides are associated with unemployment. I haven't become that yet, but my husband and I are 600,000 older people in the UK say so they leave their home once a week or less. As I said, if I was functioning, I could go about, go shopping, cook and do the things that must be done for my husband. It wouldn't bother me, but I'm just like I'm in a barrel. I'm in a cage. I'm in a prison. I'm just sat here. All right, mom. Sorry? Well, the first time it was it was at my workplace. I used to work at King's College Hospital NHS Foundation Trust. And then it was just um, things that people were saying. Yeah. That I, probably I was loud. I was dismissive of authority. Those are the things. And some of the times when, when things are happening, it's me trying to cover the... Because sometimes... I get the shakes where I'm actually shaking. Parkinson's is in my DNA, so my father and my uncle had it. And sometimes, like, whenever I get emotional, you can hear it in my voice. It's either the word's not coming out or I'm trying to get it out and they said I'm shouting. Those are the sort of things that, 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 that was used. And then it's literally the same thing again after the death of my mother. So each time I have a bereavement, something will crop up to, to where they accuse me of, of being this or that well i'm not actually setting out to be whatever they are accusing me of so they are actually judging me and with my level of education and support that i give to um to children you know i was a senko eyfs coordinator it, it is all there but they use it against me whatever it is they use against me yes and then, uh, and then uh, I, I had to represent that m myself at the Employment tr Tribunal twice. And they said I, I, I made up disabilities. So don't care what I do, they always use it against me. And then w they made other allegations again. Or they, they, did, they sent police here. I was beaten right in here. And in the MOPAP report, it said I was tensing up. So that was reason for them to handcuff me. And at the same time, I'm in handcuff and I'm wrestling with one officer. And this is the trigger. They wrote in it that I was grabbing the taser handle of another officer whilst I'm in handcuff, whilst I'm wrestling with another officer and everything. So you see the pattern they're going, uh, going the road with. If anything had happened to me, it would be my fault because I grabbed the taser handle. So they were protecting themselves. But it hasn't stopped there. Now I have my housing association. The 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 the, the, the neighbor who has lived I lived here from two thousand and one. I have reports what she's been doing to me. I didn't take it seriously, probably, but I would ask them to put on record. And now the everything that was done to me, they turning it around to say it, it's been done to me. So now I am the one who is a violent nuisance with my profile out there where they can see what I do. I advocate on behalf of others. So now I am the one who is facing imprisonment if I speak out uh, 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 and to be evicted. Sorry? Okay. I don't know. I get these moments. Nothing really happened. I, I don't know. It's just 
I don't know if it's my reflection or what it, the triggers are. I don't know. Because it's coming up to... It's coming up to the time when I, I was shopping to go home for my youngest son's wedding. And that was the time in 2014 that I actually learned my mom's story. Because I lived with my mom all my life. And, you know, she she couldn't explain. She couldn't communicate her, whatever. Then when I heard her story, that was when. Because I also judged her because she couldn't explain certain things. And then I, during that period, when for my mom's, mm, my son's wedding, I heard mom's story. The, f the f time I spent with mom, she didn't recognize me because she had dementia. I was the one who um, diagnosed her dementia. And it took a, a good while for my family to understand that she wasn't just a miserable old contagious lady. And throughout the time I spent with my mom, she didn't recognize me, but... I think I came back two days before her 90th birthday and the day I was leaving, she said to my son, she, she didn't come to say goodbye. The last picture I have of her, because I blog and I write and I do all these things, I even write a book in on how strong women for her. Her the, the eulogy that at the time I couldn't read it myself, I wrote it, my son and his wife edited it and read it. Now I can do those things because I'm writing my own poetry and stuff and voicing them. But back then I couldn't do it because of my chronic anxiety. But I've got counseling and the counseling has helped me. But at the same time, getting the help, they're using it against me. Because when people are saying I was sectioned under the Mental Health Act and I am mad and no, I am mad and, and I am deaf and all those things. I'm not deaf. I was never sectioned under the Mental Health Act. I was a SEN co-worker with children with special needs. So why are they doing all these things to me? And even sometimes when I look at some of those things that's written, they can trigger me. The least thing, I might see some a headline in a newspaper and it trigger me. So I have no... It's like I have no backup, no cover up and I, everybody has abandoned me. So I only have my hundred year old husband and he's slowly going down. And if I am not able to cook and care for him, we're going to die in here. As I, I said in that letter to my former employers, I'm, I'm depressed and I'm slow in dying of torture. So nearly 10 years, it's going to become a reality. I'm scared that I, I might commit suicide. And that's and that's very worrying for me because I'm a Christian. I will not be able to see my 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 family in the in the afterlife. I'm not. It's not feel like I am unable to care for both of us. No, I've developed an eating disorder. Yeah, and I'm diabetic as, as well. So it's all those things that come into play. I have arthritis, I have everything, but I, I try to keep up. But it's very hard where I'm at. Sorry? Yeah, yeah, because that that's the thing. When I call, because I called the other number and they said call this. I, I, I don't have, um, first time I would have people I could call and then the phase would pass. I have nobody to talk to. I, 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 some of the time I have to hide how I'm feeling from my husband because he is really traumatized. So it's, it's like I don't have a, a backup system, a support, somebody to call, somebody to talk to when I'm feeling at my lowest. I called the, the, the 999 number and, the, and then they, they, they said I should call. Yeah. And another thing that I think also that, that might be hinging on this problem is um, um, we put measures in place because my husband was getting money, his money taken whenever he goes out. And then we put measures in place. So that I accompany him. And just um, before, he, he he took me in the bank to put my details, add me to his ad account. The, the bank took uh, over six weeks. I've been on the phone with them or whatever to do that. And they only did it when 
what happened now we went we were coming from the the gp so we went into the bank the first time the tuesday it was like they couldn't do whatever after we'd asked for an addition and they'd gotten the paperwork. So I said to them, I, we'd come back the next time. The next time we went back, so that was the Thursday, everything that we got. So I had, because of the situation, we had to take passports and everything because of the negligence of the bank. Yeah. My British passport, my Jamaican passport, my husband British passport, my my certificate, other little cash and papers in 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 the envelope or whatever, and all the money my husband took out of the bank, it was stolen, in Peckham. Yeah, the way the police, the way the police um are dealing with this situation, it's not it's not right. Okay, I done my bit because as I said, I right, I done my bit and I'm like reaching out there because the the police will call me and I will tell number. I can't get back to them. Yeah? Only by email. I call up and I says to somebody, person was ever so nice, they will get in touch with the um with the person involved. Eventually somebody, two persons came to my I didn't know at the time I could hear loud noise out there in the passageway because that's one of the 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 the, the, the injunction that can imprison me about who comes in here so for me it was antisocial behavior so my neighbors let them in and there was loud talking out there that my husband was in bed and thought it was me out there yeah he's very titchy and concerned the next thing i heard the knocking on my door and when i went to the door it was two burly officers a male and a female and their behavior was just irrational because i'm saying to them they came for me to sign the witness statement i'm saying to them my husband is indisposed at the moment so give it to me so i get him to sign it the officer was telling me he can't give it to me he has to see he has to see my husband and see my husband read and sign the, the witness statement this is a witness statement that i edited with the officer in charge yeah so they were very disrespectful, not considering that I said, I even said to him, I've done power of attorney. I've just got the response. So if you want to see that, I'll let you see it. No. So I, I sent them packing and said, come back. Now the officer who is in charge is, is, is was on the phone, but he's not acting responsible either. So all those things are triggers. So I can't tell pinpoint because my husband is asking what happened, what happened. So it's those things you know piling on and then it's just because of my depressive state and everything those are the triggers that break me down because i can't see a hope in in in, in, in. i can't see a hope um how i dealt with feeling like this in the past is i had people to talk to they are not now um, abandoned because um, the thing as I said this is coming up 10 years all this is happening <laughs> so I I um, I actually went out there I didn't let it bother me once I decided I'm not going back in any workplace to be treated the way I've been treated in two workplaces I settled down so as I said I'm a very sociable person yeah if you go out there you see me advocating I'm there I was on Parkinson's um, in Parkinson's brochure I'm there at um, I was interviewed on Macmillan, same thing, cancer research, anything going. I started first fundraising to, um, after the death of my brother in 2008, and then I progressed. I've been in three choirs. I've sung at the Globe. I've been here. I've been there. I've been everywhere. I'm one of the main narrator for the the, the um, Pembroke House, Walworth Living Room um, fundraising video and i think this is I, I think this is where i pinpoint whatever is happening to me as i said i'm all over there i was in page one of itv news for winro 70 i've written a song that can be heard on an app for winro 75 but when i reach out to people who have uh, um i've done things with then i'm not getting any support so basically my intellectual property has been used to build brands and then when i reach out for support i'm not getting it so this is the plan now i have i created my first website from 2012 same time i i, I joined youtube and my website has been stolen to order and if you put the earl in you'll see who is using it out there oxy eyes so those things are whatever so i think i know i can pinpoint whatever 
I have, I just create things and stay in here and write about matters like Parkinson's anywhere. I will write about it. So what they try to do is sometimes they, um, my first business website, it's called Mervilly Consultancy. And afterward, Google, Google suspended it saying it was reported for whatever inappropriate activities. So I have about three other ones that they, they done the same thing. So as soon as I set something up, they, they done the same thing. I have three LinkedIn accounts. The first one had 69 publication. They, they stole them. So everything I created to, to just find some solace and peace. So I'm not whatever. I have 18 Facebook pages and they just take off saying, remove my thing saying I'm looking for followers and likes. Yeah. 18 pages. And that's how I get removed. So I go into, they take me into groups or whatever. As I said, I sung at the globe. The next thing I'm excluded. So now it's me alone. So um, YouTube tried to strike two of my channels. They're growing. Yeah. And then I decided, you know what? I can't let, I've lost our website. I've lost all this. I can't now let YouTube take away all these things that I've got. Because even Chris Eubank um, endorsed my book. I have the Metropolitan Police um, Commission assign my book. So I'm out there, yeah? So after now YouTube realized that I've tightened up. I'm not going to let them get away with trying to use things against me. So I just keep a low profile. They offered for me to be on their commu online community board. And yesterday I went out. Yeah, yesterday I went went out and i was passing and i'm i'm coming through some of the areas where i have done things and i went into the world world living room to make some recording one of the video now the person who came after a lot of people stopped going there especially the older folks because they feel they have been pushed out so i made i, I am saying hello to the person to tell her and you can hear on the video i'm saying oh I'm, I'm 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 making some videos to you know tie up my contributions to whatever whatever the next thing she didn't answer me so i'm saying uh, didn't you hear me the next thing she got up so because i didn't want any altercation i took my trolley and i walk out before her because i've been locked in banks before for my own right. I didn't want that to happen. So she came to the door. I came out of the door. She came to the door. She locked, um, pulled up the door. And, and I go and posted my video on YouTube. You can hear and see. She was the one behaving unprofessionally. Because I'm saying hello, hello. And she didn't answer. Yet I am known to her. Yeah. And the next thing now. I, I see a report from. Email from, 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 from YouTube. That. There was a complainant. She has gone and complained. And YouTube didn't even look at the specific of the video. Before accusing me. So now I'm looking at. What was the purpose of them putting me on their online community board. If this is the attitude they're going to take towards me. Yeah. I, I turned down not to be trusty for Parkinson's UK. Because I see where I was only going to be used for my intellectual property and, and what I have. And then they put you in a, in a bundle to say you can't do this and you can't do that. So a few years before they put out for trustees and I, I actually applied. In the end they didn't get back to me. So what they did last year, no, they actually invited me to be the trustee. I actually applied, fill out the form, and then and then I look at the specifics, and I said to me, no, here's another person. Because I've worked in two workplaces. I became a beacon who could be recognized, and I built their brand. So I saw where Parkinson's was going down that road. So I, I didn't, I refused from being a trustee, because I'm not going to sign up for anybody else to take my thing and use. It's the same thing like my song is on, 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 on an app for some... Um, Song Street, Border Crossing, and Mr. Tony Seely. And I'm reaching out even to Mr. Seely of all persons and say, can you not help me? And I'm not getting any help. And the fact that they made me a criminal needing emotional regulation treatment is another hindrance because the, it's, it's on the DBS. I can't even get volunteering. So sometimes I'm in here. I'd love to contribute. I can't do anything. So that I, I'm, I'm like, I'm buried. I'm in a prison.
And then I have my, my neighbor targeting me. And she's been coerced by my housing association. So they will make malicious report and, and send police come here that I do something that I am, I have never done. And then I have to go to court. I have to go to police station for interview. I have police again calling me up out of the blue because somebody reported something that about what I have posted online and stuff like that. If it is still online, if I post something on their platform and it's still online, it's not been removed. I am saying that means I didn't breach anything. Yeah. And police come in here when I gone to training, leave my husband in hypo. If I didn't come home when I did, you know, I was just in time to for him to help him. Those are the sort of things I've seen him in on hypo. I've never had one. We're both diabetic. I've seen him in a hypo and I don't want to go there. So can you imagine these things are really makes life even harder for me. And the fact that I'm not eating properly and I am not able to cook properly for both of us makes it even worse too diabetic yeah he's reached the age now where he can hardly eat certain things because you know just whatever just not being able to chew and he just don't eat certain things that he used to eat and with my eating disorder it's really very hard I, 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 I honestly don't know. I honestly don't know. I don't know. Mm -hmm. All right. Yes, Tom. Zero. No. Water depression. Okay. It makes sense and I'm not refusing any help that is out there, I'll take it. But with my situation, because I'm labeled and whatever and, uh, and whatever, as I said, I, I applied for Southwark Council for a subject access request and they three hundred and odd pages and it's just basically defamation. Because they and my housing association, my landlord, actually referred me to the Maudsley behind my back. So those are some of the things. So then I, I give people information, personal information, and they turn around and use it against me. Yeah, yeah it, is, it has been done ever since I wrote to my former employers to say I'm depressed and whatever. Because... When I applied for subject access request, they said they didn't have any any data for me except what I gave them for the court. So if I work for you for X amount of years and the court let them get away with it, because both times I went, I had to represent myself at court, they said I made up disabilities. I was I was I was invited to be um, health ambassador for Sodok. And then after certain things, now they all turn against me and kick me out of the group. So every group I went, I go into, I no longer belong. Feel I belong anywhere. It's it's. I'm dreading not being able. As I said, if I was functioning where I'm cooking, I'm tidying up the place, I'm doing everything for me and my husband. It wouldn't bother me. But it's just one long stretch because when I get into this situation. All I can do is I, I do my little video recording and stuff like that. So I'll upload them and I whatever. So it's just like I'm fixated at one place. I not, I can't function. Some days I don't eat, not even cold water past my mouth. And having um, diabetes is not good for me. And then I'm concerned about my husband's state of mind as well and where we are going. If we're not careful, we're both going to die in here, as I said, slowly of torture. You recover now. Yeah. Mm. Can can I can you can you t I did give you my mobile number. Did you um did you did I? 
can you like sort of um do a little round up and send send whatever uh help you can and uh, whatever suggestion you have and including this uh, whatever number i can contact could you send that to me in messaging because i function better that way yeah Oh yes, I, I can give you the email. That would be even be better, because then uh, I could uh, make a report to, to help with the situation I'm facing right here now. That whenever I'm in a crisis, I do reach out to to get support. Okay, so the the, the email is I'll, I'll I'll word it for you. R a t r a t t y. Dot. N E M B H A R D R D N E M B H A R D Nemhard nineteen fifty six at gmail dot com Yes, let me get up in. Yeah, I'm ready. One, one, six, yeah. One, two, three, yes. Okay. That's okay. All right, thank you. Bye. Tom, I don't know. This is where you see the difference. I've been abandoned by everybody. Nobody calls me. Nobody take my call. And when I reach this stage, that's what I'm scared of. I no longer have anybody to. Uh -huh. No, I don't mean you. No, no, I don't mean you. I don't, uh, this is another day lost. And I don't know if I'm going to feel better enough again tomorrow. It might be another day lost. And it's days, the days that I lose. It's the days that I lose. I'm not functioning, though. I don't know.